Hey, welcome back to the Sanders Kitchen. I'm Mike. Today, we're gonna be doing some apple dumplings. Oh my God, I love these things. We're gonna be using an eight by eight baking pan baking dish <laughs> because the apples fit so well in it and it'll actually help keep all the apples from falling apart. And today we're going to be using four apples and I have a lot of ingredients, not that much, but I'll have it all in the description for you. You can copy it out there. And so let's get started making some apple dumplings. All right, so come on over. Let's uh Let's fire up this little pan. The first thing we're gonna do is add in our three tablespoons of butter. And we're gonna melt that down. And then we're gonna add in a cup and a half of packed brown sugar, a cup of water, and a pinch of salt. And we're gonna make our sauce. So we're making, we're melting the butter right now. And um, while that's happening, I'm just gonna rush into it. Go ahead and pour my water in. And I'm gonna put my little pinch of salt in. Boop, boop, that's all I need. And now I'm gonna add in my sugar. It's packed, so I don't expect it to come flying out of here very easily. Okay, the brown sugar's in. I'm just gonna heat it up until the butter melts and when it boils, I just wanna make sure that all the sugar is melted in and then we'll turn it off and we'll go on to preparing the apples. I almost forgot we have to add the vanilla. So you could add about maybe a, a capful or about a guesstimate. <laughs> but it's not really gonna hurt anything to have a little bit more, but just don't put too much in. I would say maybe a teaspoon. We'll turn it off. I'm gonna put the lid on and we're gonna set it on the stove in the back and that's ready for our sauce. And now we're gonna go on with the apples. Okay, so the next step is to peel and core your apple. So I'm gonna take the most uneven apple first because I wanna show you what to do. You probably already know where I'm going with this, but what I'm gonna do is turn it over and try to get this even and then I'm gonna say okay how much needs to come off of the bottom and now the apple is sitting up pretty good okay and that's pretty much all I needed to do there now the next step is to go ahead and peel it you can core it first peel it first it doesn't matter I'm gonna go ahead and peel it and I'll use a nice peeler like this works great I've already got one peeled. I want you to see what I do. I'm just gonna go in with this core. You can use a knife, use anything you like. But I like this because all you have to do is give it a twist, pull it out, it's cored completely, and then you just give this little thing a push and your core is right in your hand, not a problem. And then you can take a little paring knife or this little core works great and you can just uh, shave off a little bit around the top. And if you have a little peel left on it, you can go after it if you like, or <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I will explain that I've made these before, I love them. If you leave the peel on, when you bake this apple uh, and you go to cut into it, you'll notice the peel is a little firm. Um, does it taste bad? No, it tastes fine but I think I would prefer not to have to deal with the peel while I'm eating the apple, so I'm just gonna take it off. And now, this apple is ready to go, but let me go ahead and finish up with the other three. And uh, again, make sure that if your apple's not even, you'll wanna flip it over, cut it on the bottom, and now, now your apple is, is uh, sitting up straight and pretty. 
And if it's already like straight and pretty, you could still cut a little piece off just to make it flat. That way it doesn't roll around and then just go ahead and peel it and core it. So we'll see you in a few minutes when I'm done with the other two. Okay, we're gonna start working on stuffing the apples with our sugary cinnamon and butter and some pecans. Again, everything will be in the description so you'll know how much I have. Uh, we're also gonna be using this, uh, this pre-made pie crust. Um, Pillsbury makes it, your store brand, whatever store you have. So this is a nine inch pie crust. There's two of them in the box. And uh, we're just gonna open this up. I think I already opened it, but it's not coming out. There it is. Now you just uh, need to unroll this thing carefully and it's sticking together. And uh, so we'll unroll this. I'll have to fix the hole naturally. And I'll move my apples and ingredients off to the side so we can roll this out. So <clears throat> let me get this little piece of dough here, stick it right there in the middle. And we wanna roll this out because we need to use enough out of this one piece for two apples. So I'm gonna roll it out. Yep. And I'm just gonna cut this baby right in half, about like this. Okay. And we'll lay one of them off to the side and I'll work with this one right here. So we're going to put an apple here and we're gonna pull everything up. So you can see that I don't really have enough to come up all around. So what we need to do is continue working with the dough to get it stretched out a little bit more. And you don't want it to be too thick anyway. Okay, so we rolled it out and now I'm just gonna cut the ends off and I'm gonna reserve them. There's a, something I'm gonna use that for. And we'll take the ends off like this and I'm even going to take a piece of that off like that. So we kind of made it like into a little rectangle. And, uh, and now we'll put our apple up here in the center and let's get all of our ingredients here so we can assemble the apple. Here, let me move this off to the side. So we have, uh, all right, we mixed up our cinnamon and sugar. So the first thing I'll do is pour that right down in the middle. And if it doesn't, I mean, if you make a little bit of a mess, don't worry about it, it's not that big of a deal. But take a little paring knife, get it to go down take a few of your chopped pecans. You know that's optional, you don't have to do that if you don't like pecans, but we love them. So, you know, just push them down in there with your finger. If you got too many, then just put it back, it's no big deal. And one tablespoon of butter. Now, I personally like to shove it down in the hole as much as I can like that, okay. And of course, if you handle it too much, the butter's gonna melt in your hand, so try not to handle it too much. Okay, so the thing to do now is to pull your dough up over the top, like that, on the corners, okay? Just pull the corners up and wrap it over the top. And You'll see here, you'll want to squeeze this together nicely and make a little flap out of it. But you definitely want it to come together. Uh, here's another piece here and another piece right here. And we'll just take and squeeze those little flaps in like that. Can you see how that looks? We'll just squeeze them in like that. And you definitely want to make sure that all of the dough is, is glued together, okay? Just 
that's really a big thing. You want to make sure it's all glued together. And I could see a little cinnamon on the, on the bottom. That means I know I got it all the way through there. And now let's go ahead and use a couple of these to just shape out a leaf, okay? Like that. Now, when you make your leaf, uh, just press your knife gently, don't cut it in half. And then toward the point, you wanna just push in some little lines. And you know, it makes, whoops, I kinda went a little too heavy with that. Of course, I'm not left-handed. And you know, it makes a real pretty leaf. And you just wanna bring that leaf down, press it on, and I'm telling you, at the end, that thing is gonna look so pretty, it's amazing. So if you have a little piece like this, which you will, uh, you can take a few of these little pieces of dough and wrap them up like that in your finger in your fingers and your hands and then put it right in the top like that and guess what you have you have an apple and so we're going to continue to put leaves on and get them ready for the oven oh this is so cool i can't wait to finish it up take a look at how beautiful those apples came out oh they're so pretty the little leaves draping down the side, it's amazing. We preheated the oven to 375 and I warmed up my sauce just to make sure that all the sugar was melted. It might look a little thin, but it gets thicker as it cooks. So we're just going to ladle over the top, pour the sauce over and slide them right into that oven and they're gonna bake for 50 minutes or until the top is golden brown. And don't forget to baste every maybe 20 minutes or so, okay? You just wanna baste it a couple of times while they're cooking. And when these apples are golden brown, they're going to be beautiful. So we're gonna slide them right into that oven and we'll see you in about an hour. Okay, I pulled the apple dumplings out of the oven and we're just going to baste them a little bit. And then we'll put them back in. Oh man, look how beautiful that is. Oh, that is so pretty. All right. Look at the bubbles coming around there. You know, 375 degrees, that's hot stuff right there. You can tell that the sauce is thickened up and the apples, oh, they smell so good. It's really amazing. They are beautiful too, but they're so hot. So you really need to let this cool for probably a good 20 to 30 minutes. Before, uh, before you attempt to eat it. Now, I mean, if you like them hot and you wanna eat this with some ice cream, that's great. Uh, I'm not gonna eat mine with ice cream. I'm probably just gonna eat it like this. But uh, I definitely want them to cool down. And then, so we're gonna let them cool for about a half hour and we'll come back and, and we'll do the taste test, all right? So we'll see you in about a half hour. Okay, the Apple dumplings are cooled off now for about 20 minutes. They're probably still pretty hot, but I'm gonna go ahead and take one out. This is the pretty one right here. You know, I use the eight by eight for four apples because I kind of think that when they, they're leaning up against each other, you know, they, they kind of support each other a little bit. I think that's why I like using that. But I want you to see the sauce, how it's just right. It's just the perfect consistency. So the sauce really worked out good. And I'm going to take a few, 
pecans and just throw those in because I like a little pecan on the apple dumpling. And by the way, you can call it a dumpling or a dumpling. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut into this. Let me move this baby out of the way and, and uh, I'll let you know what it tastes like. Boy, does that smell good. And that sauce is so beautiful. Mmm. Man, I cannot wait. I have got to have a piece of this. Let me cut that in half. Oh boy, mm. I love this. I love the flavors. You know, it's just not overpowering. The There's no overpowering of cinnamon. It's not too sweet. It's just absolutely fabulous. Mm. The dough, the dumpling on the outside, beautiful. It's, it's hard on the, it's crispy right on the outside. Then it gets soft and chewy on the inside. Mmm, it is delish. This is absolutely one of my favorite things to eat. And of course, it's probably one of my favorite uh, desserts to eat, but it is beautiful. So let me just wrap it up by saying, Thank you guys for tuning into the Sandra's Kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. It's, it's so tasty. I hope you make it at home. So if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends and family about us so they can enjoy it too. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when we come out with new videos. Anyway, thanks so much again for watching our channel, for watching our video. Have a great week. Go make you some apple dumplings. And God bless you.